Oh, I still can't forget what my cast one professor told us during my first year in UP Diliman, and that is your vote counts precisely because it is one. It doesn't count as three fourths or one half, but as one whole. And I think this is something really important to empower our future registered voters, especially since they've extended the voter registration deadline to October 30. Speaking of, there's no better way to inspire each of us to vote and to do so wisely than through voter literacy. But we're not going to read the room alone. For today, we have a very special guest joining us, a professor with 25 years of service in the political science department in the University of the Philippines Diliman, with a focus on research methods, comparative politics, and of course, Philippine politics. In her free time, she is a loving mother, an avid Netflix user, 80s music fan, and a European football enthusiast. Everyone, let's give a warm welcome to Professor Ella Atienza. I'm Ella. Let's read the room on voter literacy. Thank you very much for joining us in today's conversation, Mama Tienza. And I'm sure along with our listeners, we'll learn a lot from today's episode. How would you define voting literacy to the average voter? It's not so much about knowing, for instance, the constitutional requirements about uh, the electoral process or the eligibility of certain candidates, but voter literacy is knowing, for instance, the role of voters, why voting is important in politics, why elections are held. So uh, there should be an appreciation on the part of uh, people that they know their role in politics as citizens and voters and they know the importance of the electoral process in a democratic system. And voter literacy should also focus not just on the personalities of the candidates that are presenting themselves for particular positions. Voter literacy should focus on the programs and the issues that are important, particularly issues that are relevant in the lives of uh, people. So it's important to get to know how candidates and um, parties stand on these issues uh, and what are the track record of these candidates on these issues. Are there any common misconceptions about voter literacy? We tend to focus so much on the candidates per se, the personality. Many observers have already mentioned that uh, Philippine politics and Philippine elections have rely so much on personality of candidates rather than programs and policies. So we have to do something about that. People should go beyond the personality or the manufactured uh, personalities because as we know now, particularly with uh, the growth of not just uh, traditional uh, media but social media, there could you can actually hire groups of experts, media experts who can uh, fabricate a particular narrative for candidates. So part of voter education is uh, actually making sure that voters know how to appreciate the information and the narratives that are given to them. Normally, we are bombarded by a lot of advertisements, a lot of uh, propaganda. So how do we help voters actually appreciate this and analyze this? I really do agree, you know. There should be that aspect for each and every single individual to really look deeper into these candidates because at the end of the day, sure, you are a registered voter, but of course, like, casting that vote, is it enough? Is that the end already of your vote? Because we also need to take action to our choices. We need to help our candidates, of course, on believing them with their platform and giving them the platform to serve our country. How can we encourage Filipinos to vote in the upcoming elections? Filipinos generally tend to vote more than participate in other forms of participation in politics. So we're not saying that voting is not important. It's very important, but we should also make sure that we take care of our exercise of voting, our responsibility of voting, by also complementing that with making our authority or people we elected accountable to us. But perhaps one thing that should motivate Filipinos to vote is that it's not just a right. 
that you can exercise or even choose not to exercise because that, that's the thing with rights you have the option not to yeah. exercise that right but it's also a responsibility in a democratic setting where we believe that government emanates from the people and government is accountable to the people in the end power resides in the people then we should actually use our power to vote to elect our leaders carefully so in that sense perhaps that's the qualification in terms of encouraging people to register and to vote in a pandemic situation but the point is even in normal times when we register when we exercise our right to vote we should not look at it simply as a right that we can choose not to do after we have exercised our right to vote we should also see it as one of our responsibilities in a democratic setup i do agree you know voting is one thing but yeah. acting upon your vote is another yeah. participating yeah. to initiatives to uh-huh. projects it brings further the platform that you trusted to the forerunner for the for, for presidency or whoever is being elected to the mm-hmm. position in regards to vote buying you that you brought up a while ago ma'am do you think there could be a change in light of the pandemic like is it more accessible is it less well complications this pandemic definitely there are poorer people that's why people are afraid that social assistance for poor people unemployed people will be used particularly at the local level to buy votes to politicize the campaign to work for the advantage of incumbent uh, officials so there are fears that this can be used but crisis can also bring in new issues so no amount of vote buying may affect how people vote people will vote on the basis of issues that are important to them so for instance if we're looking at what happened in some countries that uh, held elections successfully during the pandemic basically pandemic response will be a very important factor in determining how people will vote it's a way for them to review the performance of the government or the people in power. So there are new dynamics that we can uh, consider in terms of how people will vote. There are, of course, ongoing investigations in the Senate and the House of Representatives and it has in a way an effect in the recent survey of Pulse Asia where usually the number one concern of people would be economic poverty, work, employment opportunities but now people are also considering corruption as an important issue. If this continues up to next year, that can be an important issue that can frame how people vote in the 2022 elections. And wow, that definitely gave us a lot of food for thought. Thank you very much for your time, Mama Tienza. And it is so important for us to gain as many perspectives on a topic as possible. And I speak for our audience when we say that your insights are so valuable. Again, thank you. And do you have anything you'd like to promote or plug before we sign off? Yeah, well, of course, for young people, it's important to get acquainted. Of course, I know people are very busy and it's very difficult now that we are on remote learning. It can get very uh, tiring to always be online. But if you have access, there are a lot of discussions almost every day. So find those that fit your interest. But if uh, you want to follow the electoral process, you want to participate, there are so many organizations within UP, outside UP, that are trying to discuss, not focusing on campaigning on specific candidates or parties, but actually discussing issues, which should be the focus of elections, not just in the Philippines, but any other country. So try to participate in those things. If you can be active in various organizations, volunteer groups that can help other sectors, not just participate in elections, but actually focusing on providing basic services for certain people, particularly now that we are in a pandemic, then be part of that. That's part of actually of citizenship in training. We don't have to take care of the world. Just taking care of colleagues, taking care of our neighbors, our family members. This is the start of being part of political community. Going out of ourselves and actually engaging with 
other people. All right. Thank you, Mama Tienza. And thank you, everyone. See you next time here on Isaac Leads. Be hashtag one with Isaac. And make sure to stay up to date on the latest information because when it comes to young ownership, we are leading with you. Thank you. And register now so you can cast your vote for the upcoming elections.